Hey guys, Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com here, and today we're going to take a look at what is responsive design. So as a designer or a business owner, I'm sure you have been browsing around the web on your mobile device or your tablet and run into a website where you have to sort of pinch and zoom and move around with your thumb and try to press a very small link with your finger and hope you get the right one. And if you don't, you have to go back and redo the whole process again. Well, responsive design aims to get rid of that whole problem by presenting the best website possible depending on the device the user is using to access your website. So a desktop, it can be a massive, expansive website or a very small smartphone. It's going to be a very compact, very vital information only, lots of big buttons kind of website. That's essentially what responsive web design is. So you can see here, we live in this really exciting time where you can access the web through all these different amazing devices. And that provides us with a little bit of a problem. Um, and as you can see here, I found this funny graphic not too long ago. I heard you want to be a web developer. Well, here are a few devices to test your site. Um, and it's almost true. Uh, so the question that we should ask is, is it possible to even reach all these devices? Uh, the answer to which is sort of. Our website will always get to these devices, but we want to use responsive design to deliver the best website possible depending on that user's device. Uh, so I'm going to start out with a quote here from John Alsop from his book, A Tao of Web Design, where he says, the control which designers know in the print medium and often desire in the web medium is simply a function of the limitation of the printed page. We should embrace the fact that the web doesn't have the same constraints and design for this flexibility. But first, we must accept the ebb and flow of things. So what Alsop is saying is, whereas normally if you design something for a piece of paper, a standard eight, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, that paper is always eight and a half by 11 and you're always working within that. Whereas something on the web, it could be on a 2048 pixel wide resolution screen or a screen that's 420 pixels wide. So instead of being frustrated by that constraint, accept it and recognize that there's a ton of really awesome things you can do with that. And in fact, that a website like that is much more accessible than just a standard printed page um, because you could pull your phone out anytime you want and access the web, whereas typically people don't carry a book in their pocket. So what exactly is responsive design? Well, responsive design is a website which adapts to its environment to provide the best possible web experience uh, for the person accessing your site. Big screen, small screen, if they're accessing it over a fast network or a slow network, maybe the location from which they're accessing the website, uh, all kinds of things like that. Um, so responsive design is going to continually be moving to change and adapt whether or not the person is accessing the site from a desktop computer, a smaller laptop, a very small smartphone, or a reasonably sized tablet. Responsive design is going to adapt. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Tutvid.com, for instance, is a responsive website. As you scroll your browser window in and out or up and down, you're going to see the, uh, the site excuse me, making some changes. Uh, sites like Starbucks.com is a responsive website. And if you just run over to Google and punch in something like responsive uh, web design gallery uh, or something like that, there are lots of people who have curated cool lists of different responsive websites and you can sort of just test drive them and scroll in and out and kind of see how they're going to change based on the resolution of your monitor. Um, and then you can go ahead and pull one up on your tablet or smartphone and see if it changes anymore um, depending on whether or not you're on a slow network or a fast network. Sometimes the images change or drop out, all kinds of different things that you can do. So responsive web design is going to provide a pleasing website system uh, which is going to respond to the different needs and, and the things that are required uh, for different devices in the hands of different users. So mobile users need things like larger buttons, right? You don't want to have to pinch and zoom and t try to tap a tiny little text link in a navigation bar. Large thumb-friendly buttons are a good thing so you can use your phone with one hand. Um, vital information should load first. Again, it's a smaller screen, less screen real estate, if you will. Um, and also, faster loading website by either using smaller images, lower quality images, leaving some images out, uh, leaving less information out of the website, a more, again, vital information first. If you're running an airline company, you're probably not going to put a big gallery of images or a big slider with a bunch of specials on your mobile website because typically if somebody is accessing your website on the go, it's because they need to book a flight, they need to change their flight, they need to check a flight, things like that. You're rushing through the airport, you've got your suitcase in one hand or dragging you know, a bunch of people behind you or whatever it may be. The fact is, you don't really have time to sit there and fiddle around and hunt through a massive website, you know, drop everything you're holding and start using two hands on your phone um, to try to find out this information that the, that the airline website should just have available 
for the mobile version of their site. Again, so you're taking into consideration the, the device and you're also thinking about, okay, if the person's accessing it from this device, they're probably going to be in this or that situation. So if you can think ahead and plan ahead, you can design an even more effective uh, responsive website. So this whole idea of one thumb, one eye is just a good thing to keep in mind. If you're a mother walking through the store, uh, you've got a, you're pushing a child in a stroller with one hand, you're not gonna let go of that stroller. Um, so you need to be able to sort of focus and, and learn everything you can learn about the website with one eye and with one thumb, because you're just using that phone there with your one hand. So one thumb, one eye, design with that in mind, and it's a good thing. One of the examples that you're gonna see if you do any kind of research on responsive design is this idea of responsive architecture. Uh, it got brought up in a book that I read a while ago. I wanna say a book by Ethan Marcote. Um, I think that's who it was that brought it up. It's a really, really cool idea. Um, but aside from that, basically responsive architecture is the idea that buildings are gonna respond to the people that are in them. So maybe smart glass will become like a solid wall at night, but during the day it's see-through, uh, or walls move and adjust and things like that. Um, but the, the, the important thing about responsive architecture, beside the fact that it is really, really cool, um, from a web perspective, the interesting thing about it is responsive architecture adopts the idea that a space should conform to the people within it, right? So the space shouldn't be influencing your behavior. If you walk up to a building that is jam-packed, instead of saying, oh, nope, that's too full, I don't fit there, the building could instead expand and allow for more people to fit into it. Um, so in, in the same, uh, along the same vein, excuse me, uh, your device would inform your website, right? The person is informing the space, which is your website, and your website can then say, okay, if you're approaching my website with a slow network on a small phone, uh, we can go ahead and load the fast loading, vital information only, one thumb, one eye friendly version of the website, boom, and the user gets a much more ideal experience. So that's kind of what responsive design is. Um, I'll be doing another video on why you should be interested in responsive web design and the importance of mobile computing and how, how huge a role it is playing um, in the world today, uh, which is just one of the reasons why you should be interested in responsive design and why you should be concerned with responsive design as far as a version of your website. Uh, so that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for sticking around and checking it out. Uh, make sure you go over to the site tutvid.com for more free video tutorials and other editions of Tutvid issues as well. Take it easy. I'll catch you around.